What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and today we're going to be taking a look at the Radeon RX 480. This is one of the three new graphics cards from AMD using the Polaris architecture which is built on a 14 nanometer FinFET technology. This basically gives the GPU nearly double the transistors to play with in the same area as 28 nanometer technology, resulting in higher clock speeds, more power efficiency, and more performance per watt. AMD is claiming that their new Radeon RX series will deliver on the promises of gaming and VR for everyone. In terms of specs, the RX 480 comes in 4 and 8 GB variants with GDDR5 memory. The model I have in this video is the 8 GB variant with a memory speed of 8 gigabits per second. It also comes out of the box with a base and boost clock of 1120 and 1266 MHz respectively. As mentioned before, this is one of the three new cards from AMD, with the RX 470 and the RX 460 being released at a later time. In terms of aesthetics, there really isn't anything attractive about the card. I mean, it's essentially a black rectangular block with a blower design. No additional backplate, sexy curves, or even fancy LEDs. I mean, after all, the starting price is only $199. I'm actually more interested to see what the board partners would do with the overall design. When you compare a card like the GTX 1080, you can really see how small the RX 480 is. The height is practically the same, however it's much shorter in width, measuring about 9.5 inches. In terms of I.O., you get one HDMI 2.0B and three display ports which are 1.3 HBR3 and 1.4 HDR ready. The RX 480 also features AMD FreeSync, so if you have a FreeSync monitor or are planning to get one, then you will be able to enjoy your games free of tearing and stuttering. Another new software being introduced is AMD's new overclocking utility called the Radeon Wattman that gives you control of the GPU's voltage, clock speeds, temperature, and fan speeds. You can either fine-tune your GPU for each specific game through the utility, or set a global overclock regardless of the game you're playing. For the benchmark tests, I am using my Primo Chill test bench that has a 5930K that's overclocked to 4.5 GHz, 16 gigs of G-Skill RAM, and a Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3 cooler, all packed on the Asus Strix X99 gaming motherboard. For temps, the RX 480 would hover around 38 degrees Celsius, whereas it would max out at 85 degrees during full load. To power the GPU, you would only need a single 6-pin PCI connector, and for power consumption, the entire system would peak at 305 watts on some benchmarks, whereas it would constantly hit 280 watts on average at full load. And finally, during idle, the system would use up only 130 watts. The card is also fairly quiet. Even during full load, I could barely hear the fans spinning. Alright, so moving on to the benchmarks, which I'm sure is the reason why a lot of you guys are here. Unfortunately, I didn't have a GTX 960 or 970 on hand, so instead I compared the RX 480 against the GTX 1080, 1070, and the R9 380, which is currently the same price as the RX 480. So let's go ahead and do this. So there you have it, very impressive numbers from the RX 480. Although it won't bring you 4K content that's playable, it will surely keep you satisfied for 1080p and even Quad HD given that you tweak the settings a bit. The RX 480 outright destroyed the R9 380, seeing an average of 20-30% to increase in FPS performance. This means that we will most likely see price drops on some of AMD's budget and mid-range graphics cards. Based on the Quad HD benchmarks, the RX 480 has the best bang for your buck with a score of 5.21. Without a doubt, the RX 480 is the GPU to buy if you have a budget of around 200 bucks. I'm not done playing with the RX 480 just yet. I have a bunch of comparisons coming up as well as an RX 480 Crossfire build in July, so make sure you guys are subscribed if you don't want to miss out. As always, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, make sure to leave a like, and I will see you in the next video.